Alright, so now I'd like to step you through kind of the career path that I've gone on, which has been a little bit uh, crazy, I guess would be the way to say it. So, I, I can honestly say that I think I've gotten into project management or into a project management role from just about every way possible. So, I'll go ahead and start with, uh, I used to work for a computer company, Gateway, and when I started there I was a phone technician and I ended up getting into the training department and being a, a senior technician for a while. When I was in the training department uh, I was doing some things that were projects but I didn't really know that they were projects. I, After I was in the training department for a while I ended up uh, managing the training department so there were some projects that we did in terms of uh, implementing systems to track uh, training hours spent because for the state of New Mexico, I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the time. We had to keep track of that so that there was some type of a, a tax break or something like that for the company based on the amount of training that we provided for our employees. So th that was just one example of the, the type of thing that, that I did there. So I was kind of doing some project management kind of in an informal way in an operational environment to, you know, just get things done. Uh, at, at, a, at some point uh, at, during that time, I was also um, kind of self-taught in terms of HTML, some JavaScript and PHP and things like that. I was doing a lot of web development back then for the training department and, you know, just I was kind of a geek too. Um, at a certain point, uh, there was an application that needed to be developed. There was a, essentially a call flow to an, an online application, and uh, I was selected to to lead that effort. So, I got to be the the lead developer on that, and also manage that project. It was about a six month project, and so that was uh, kind of a way that I got into project management from a from a technical uh, background. And then I ended up going back to managing a team of technicians, so in a functional environment. And again, on that team, I managed uh, quite a few projects as well. But it's one of those things that I didn't, I didn't really think that I was managing projects at the time. I haven't even, hadn't even heard of project management yet. Um, when I was looking at my career history, after I did discover in 2004 that uh, project management was something that that A, I had been doing some of, but I hadn't really been doing it in a formal way, and I didn't really know what it was. But after I learned about it, I, you know, I said, wow, this is, this is perfect for me. And so when I started going back and looking at my work experience, I, I started to see, yeah, you know, that was a project. It had a beginning and an end, and I led a group of people to, you know, to implement it. And, you know, we didn't use MS Project or anything like that. It was mostly spreadsheets or, you know, just saying you go do that and, and maybe ha putting a bulleted list together of things that needed to get done. But uh, it was a project, so that was uh, that was my experience there. And then after Gateway, um, it was uh, 2002, they ended up uh, closing down that, that entire call center, so I moved uh, back up to where I'm originally from, which is Sioux Falls, South Dakota and I was the service operations manager for a startup company in uh, telecommunications. It was actually the first, uh, do you know the, the Verizon and AT&T, they have those, uh, those wireless cards that you plug into your laptop now and it works off of the cell towers. You get data through there, the 3G systems. Well, the company that I worked for, we implemented the first of, that, of its kind, the first commercial network, uh, CDMA network in the US and it was the second in the world the first one was in uh, in Korea in South Korea so um, I was there for about two years I was the service operations manager so there was uh, quite a bit of startup type things everybody wore a lot of hats it was a great environment a startup environment is a good place to get project management experience because you you have to manage projects if you're in a management role in that environment and even if you're not in a management role and you're in a technical role that's a great place to be able to you know because the roles aren't really well defined so it's it's easier for you to to kind of shift your role and shape your role into what you want it to be 
The downside of a startup environment can be that uh, there isn't a whole lot of time for you to have a mentor who has done this before. So I definitely had mentors in that environment, but we were all running around like chickens with their heads cut off <laughs> most of the time. So, and uh, you know, a lot of their experience came on the business side and things like that. So, um, so that that's my experience there. Um, after that, uh, we ended up that 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 venture ended up uh, failing. Essentially, we we were trying to get uh, bought out by one of the major carriers, and that didn't happen. So, that ended up not working out after a few years. I went to go work for Midcontinent Communications, which is a telco uh, internet service. They do internet service, they do telephone, they do cable TV. So they're they're a telecommunications provider. Uh, up here and, and and I worked the telephony team there uh, and then after that I moved into financial services so I've gone from uh, computer support and computer manufacturing into um, into uh, ISP the ISP world essentially but with a twist because it's got a telecommunications uh, twist to it as well and and then strictly telecommunications and move financial services and really at at the time when I moved there uh, so far I'd, the organizations that I had been in didn't really take project management too seriously uh, gateway did back in the day but it wasn't it was kind of a different part of the of the of the company and not something that I was too exposed to we did some six sigma and that's the six sigma initiatives at gateway was really when I started to get interested in the idea of project management, but they were very much, you know, functional, day-to-day uh, -day operations focused uh, as well. So when I looked to move to Citibank, I was really looking for an environment where I could start uh, getting into project management because it was really around this time that I realized that there was this formal thing called project management out there. <clears throat> when I when I when I left the the startup company, that was when I really started looking at it. And so when I was at Midcontinent, the whole time I was I was uh, learning more about it too. So when I started at Citibank, uh, I I really took a step down because I I had been uh, an operations manager up until then, <clears throat> and I specifically told myself, you know, even if I have to take uh, a step back in order to move forward, uh, that's what I need to do. So I I took a, a role as a project analyst going back into a technical role and so I was leveraging some of the experience that I had picked up throughout the years because I was kind of a, a technical manager throughout this entire process and learning a lot of things uh, myself so most of it was self-taught um, but in this project analyst role I was a database developer so I worked with uh, Microsoft SQL and Oracle uh, quite a bit and did some you know front end programming as well so we we did a lot of process improvement projects and when Citibank had uh, acquired different companies I was one of the people that made sure that the systems of the company that they acquired talked to our systems and and did the translation between the systems and those kind of things so really the reason why I took this job was so that I could get uh, experience in a in a more formal project environment than I had been exposed to before uh, and so that I had some some opportunities that could potentially come up as well and that definitely did happen essentially what I started off as a project analyst uh, after about a year I was promoted to a lead and during that during this whole time I was starting to move some more formal project management practices into place so I started doing things like um, I uh, created uh, one one sh you know one page status reports uh, and one page project plans and I started doing these on my own as a developer and as a team lead to start to put some some rigor and some some formality around the projects that we were doing because even you know even though I did join the company to get a more formal project environment and it was a more formal project environment than what I was used to um, there were a lot of smaller projects that we were doing in that department that the management never really saw the value in in looking at those as formal projects so I'm talking about projects any from anywhere from 
two weeks to three months in duration or something like that. Really, they would only look at it as a project if it got up to like six months in duration or, or things like that. So for these smaller projects, I started putting some, some rigor into them. I started doing some scheduling with, uh, with some things. I actually created a, a template in Excel that mimicked a lot of the functionality that MS Project has. Um, and so there was the, so I essentially kind of grew this role into the point where by the time that I left Citibank, I was managing projects. I was also the technical lead, so I was kind of like half technical and half managing the projects. And I was managing, you know, projects of, you know, three or four or five different people that were working with me as well. Um, and when I left Citibank, it was it was uh, interesting because I had an offer to become a uh, um, essentially like a business analyst, but it was kind of like a junior project manager uh, type role. That was one of the options that I had. They had offered me that at Citibank, and at the same time, uh, a friend of mine that I went to school with um, had gotten a job out at Aeros Data Center, which here in Sioux Falls, that's it's, it's in the aerospace industry. And what Aeros Data Center does is they run the ground system for uh, a, a few a few different satellite missions, and they, they they do a lot of different things out there. But it's a federal it's a federal agency here in Sioux Falls, and uh, the project that I was in particularly interested in was LDCM, and LDCM is the Landsat Data Continuity Mission. So there's this uh, series of satellites called the Landsat uh, satellites and right now Landsat 5 and Landsat 7 are up orbiting the Earth and Landsat 8 is the next version so the project that I wanted to be on was the project uh, that was developing that satellite and gonna be going through and doing the launch and building the ground system for it so that we could get the data down from the satellite and do all that thing so this is the type of satellite that this is is a remote sensing satellite, so instead of being pointed out at the stars, it's pointed back at the Earth, and it's got a lot of uh, scientific instruments to uh, to detect things like vegetation, temperature, um, all those kinds of uh, scientific things.